Hey everybody, welcome back. I see Marie, you're on, and Renee. Hello, welcome. Um, as you can see, I've just kind of, I've already started the drawing a bit, but if you happen to be drawing along, um, if you have toned paper, that's what I'm gonna be working on. Um, it's a Strathmore toned paper, and I'm actually gonna be building this up using charcoal and uh, white chalk. Um, and the subject that I've got, you know, if, as you can tell by the, the title of this, is, uh, is this pipe that I found. I had it, it's my grandfather's old pipe that I had um, laying around the apartment, and I found it really interesting. It ri reminded me of the, the René Magritte uh, painting uh, of the, the same title. I'm not going to uh, have everybody suffer through my poor French translation, but um, one of the things that strikes me about René Magritte's uh, painting of the pipe is that it's really ultimately about the relationship between the, the, the painting or the drawing as an object and the object that's being represented. You know, he's just calling into question the fact that when, uh, you know, when we, when we create an image on the page, it triggers in the viewer's mind uh, the, the presence of that actual object. We think that is a pipe, when the reality is, is actually no, they're marks on paper, it's charcoal and chalk on paper. Um, and so it creates this really interesting kind of uh, meta description about what we're looking at. So, um, hello there. Welcome, I see more people joining in. So feel free to join in the chat. Um, when you see me looking off to the left here, what I'm doing is I'm looking at another monitor that has a chat open. So I'm gonna to try to be checking that uh, frequently throughout. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing um, or any comments, if you wanna share some of your own approaches, your techniques, your observations, go for it. I always recommend that you work from life. So if you have an object that may be similar to this, um, or if you just wanna practice any object on toned paper, you know, go ahead, follow along. If you'd like to follow along exactly with me, I've got this reference image in the description there in YouTube. You should be able to click on a link that brings it up and you can either work from that or download it. Um, so come along, we'll, uh, we'll get started here. As you can see, I've already got some marks on the page. I've been kind of um, messing around while we're waiting for this to go live, kind of working out some of the initial lines and curves. And what I'm looking at as I'm doing that is I'm looking to do some angle sighting um, so actually, maybe if I can bring this here where you can start to see it a bit more clearly. Um, if, if, for example, I'm looking for the angle of uh, you know, this part of the pipe, I can take my pencil, line it up with that, and then transfer it down, just keeping my wrist locked, um, move it down, and I can check it against the angle that I've got. And what I'm looking at is the kind of the central axis of that edge of the pipe, and I'm feeling like I'm getting pretty close to that. Um, and when, I'm, when I've got the angles right, what I'm what I tend to do is I tend to move them up and down because of what I haven't quite resolved yet is the distance between those two marks. And so on the page, you can see it's forming this really kind of hazy um, kind of edge there because I haven't quite locked that in yet. So I'm gonna let that continue to be hazy, although I'm feeling pretty good about the angle that we've got. Um, I can also then do the same with these portions of the pipe. See this, this vertical edge on the right um, from this photograph, if I'm going to, if I'm looking to create kind of more of a photorealistic uh, uh, expression of this, uh, then I, I'm going to really want to dial in the proportions and the angle. So if I look at this angle on the, the right side of the pipe, it's not quite vertical. It's tilted just to the right. And so I want to make sure that my drawing is doing that as well. Um, and I can bring this line a little bit more than vertical. One of the things we talked about in the previous um, and the, the previous drawing was using the edge of the paper to kind of, as a guide, to help kind of create a, a, a vertical edge there. And so if, if I do that same technique and I just run my, my pinky kind of locked in on the edge here, I can see what vertical is. It's kind of like a plumb line. And I can see that the, the line that I've started to indicate here is just tilted past that. Uh, the other thing that I want to look for as well is this axis here. Now, the the opening of the pipe here is not a perfect circle. It's kind of pinched, um, but rounded at the same time. Um, so one of the instincts that I'm trying to fight at this point is to conceive of that as a perfect circle that is drawn as an ellipse on the page. Um, so I really want to observe that shape um, and notice how it's kind of pinched here and a little bit kind of a sharper turn here. Um, and what's going to be most critical for me is to try to find this angle, um, in, in a, specifically that angle as it relates to this vertical edge along here. And when I, when I align this up here, I can see that there's a slightly downward slope to that. So that puts these two lines really at a right angle to one another. 
So if I find that central axis, I can bring that there. Um, I, have, I haven't quite established the height along here, but it's starting to feel pretty good. So I might be able to move that axis up and down as I do that. Again, just using the weight of the pencil to make these marks because I don't want any of these to be permanent at this point. Um, you know, so anybody's following along in the chat, uh, feel free to shout out where you're uh, joining from. It was really exciting to see uh, in the drawing on Friday, people from all over the world joining in. All right, so let me see if now what I want to do is determine this curve. And this gets really tricky. So what I want to do is break this curve down into shorter straight segments. Um, so, you know, for example, we've got, if we see this as one long curve, that gets really difficult to really lock that in. But what if I were to break this into these parts, I can look at that first part, determine what that angle is, move to this part, see what that angle is, and then you can see how it starts to level off near the bottom and then back into that diagonal curve that we already established. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to carry this down. I'm going to create a kind of a straight line along here and maybe break that into additional segments. It starts to level out across back in here. And then what you can do is you can use the natural curve of the wrist to uh, try to straighten those out. So at this point, it, this edge is really kind of messy. It's quite hazy because I've got so many marks established there. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. The next thing that are, that's going to be really critical for me is determining where uh, the, the low point and the high point of this curve are. You can see it's not quite symmetrical on that backage of the curve. The high point is back over here off to the left of center. The low point looks like it's right in here, which is just about right in center. Um, and then we have this kind of sharper cut along in here. So I'm going to try to indicate that as well. So if I have that, that low point right here in the center, the high point back up in here, and I know where the edges are along this axis, then I can start to close that off. Again, locking my wrist, just using my elbow my shoulder to create this curve, that's ultimately most effective for creating ellipses on the page. You know, we tend to want to use the natural curve of the wrist, but that actually is, it's, it's, it's quite um, limiting uh, in that because it's, if, if this becomes kind of a pivot point, you've really got one quality of curve. If you can lock your wrist, use your shoulder, and maybe your elbow to draw from, you really have a greater range of motion here. Um, and you can have ultimately greater control over the ellipses. And if you're struggling with that, um, just practice. Uh, what I'm doing at this point is just resting uh, say my pinky on the page to provide additional support and just letting that, that pencil hover over the top of the page. Before I even put a mark down there, I'm just kind of visualizing the path of that ellipse and just getting comfortable using the shoulder um, to create these, these round edges. Um, and, and in this case, I know it's not a perfect ellipse, but I can kind of start to get close and then maybe trim that up and make it more specific. I know there are areas where it gets a little bit flatter. You know, it's, it's really kind of a, a specific curve. Um, I can start to then also look at the opening here. And one of the things that's really kind of critical is looking at this gap along here. So on this side, you can see it's a bit wider. Um, as we come down here, we can still see a bit of that opening lip. Over here, there's kind of a rounded quality to the top of the pipe, and as a result, it gets really thin there, and I want to reflect that as well. So this inner curve is slightly different than the outer curve, um, and if you, you kind of trust that in your drawing, um, it's going to convey to the viewer that there is some irregularity in the opening there as well. Um, so one of the things we've talked a lot about in some of the previous uh, sessions here um, is some negative drawing. It's using your eraser to draw from. You can see this is really getting just kind of out of control with my marks. I haven't erased anything at this point, but I can use my eraser to kind of cut back that form. Uh, I want to hold off doing that for now, though, until I'm starting to see the overall form show here. I want to take some time. Renee, upstate New York, welcome. We see Susan from Florida. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, Randy from North Carolina. Angela from California. Julio, all right, from Spain, sweet. Um, oh, is there another one from, uh, Susie, are you from Spain as well? Uh, Robin, uh, 
Is that George from Austria? Hello. Hopefully I didn't butcher anybody's name, so I apologize. He's coming through fairly quickly. Um, all right, so what I want to do establish, what I want to establish now is this section of the pipe. Um, you know, when I took this photograph, I actually kind of had it propped up um, so that I could see it at this angle. I wanted an angle that gave me as much information about the form of the pipe as possible. If it was a perfect profile, it becomes really difficult um, because uh, you know, it really just show that volume of the pipe. Um, and so I needed to have it at kind of this three-quarter angle where I could see that opening, and that really gives me the form. I also wanted to be at such an angle that I could see these curves along here to help indicate the cross contour there. Now, one of the drawings we did last week was with the bananas that had the tape over it, and that serves a very similar function as this handle does, where it really helps to showcase that form. If this was just solid ivory in here, um, it could be very challenging to create that really three-dimensional form. So this just gives us a little bit more information to work with, and it, in a way it starts to become you know, a bit more lazy. Um, so what I'm doing now is looking at that negative space here to determine where I need to start this part of the handle, um, and really observing how it wraps around here. It actually starts to flatten out there. There's some kind of irregularity. I wanna see that overall angle, and that feels pretty good. I wanna measure up here to see where the end of the, the pipe is. And what I can use to help do that is I can kind of sight measure this distance. So I'm taking from the, 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 the measurement from the left side of the pipe to the right side of that main body. And if I carry that, that same measurement across, I can use that to compare to the, the handle. So this measurement here um, should get me close to the edge of that handle. So let me see how that relates. That becomes the edge of the pipe. And that's pretty darn close as I start to look at this edge here. Now I can refine all that later. I wanna get this curve down. And as I'm working on the curve, this is a really interesting form here. Even though it's very subtle, it starts as a cylindrical form down here, and then it starts to pinch off toward to more of an elliptical form. So it's, it's got a horizontal axis to it, but it's still rounded. And you can see kind of an edge here, so it, 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 it uh, translates from uh, somewhat of a rectangular opening to a cylindrical. It's not quite re rectangle, it's just more rectangular. And so that's something that I want to capture as well. So as I come down here, I might do kind of a, a compound curve by letting this cylindrical edge carry over, extend that, and bring that other edge down here, visualize the angle of the opening, and then round it out a little bit. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm thinking about a, a cylinder here, kind of a, a horizontal edge that kind of cuts into it. So there's this bit of a compound curve here, um, a, a straight edge across here that we then round over. Um, and that makes me feel pretty good as a whole that I'm, that I'm kind of dialing this in. Again, these edges are quite soft at this point. Um, and so I can use my eraser to refine that. Um, hello everybody. We see uh, more people from Ontario, Massachusetts, Michigan, hello, hello. Um, actually, I'm not going to use my, my rubber eraser. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser and refine that edge out a little bit. So now I'm going to do some negative drawing, really looking at those edges, seeing how that feels. Now I'm being careful to preserve the, the tone paper. I haven't talked about that yet because I'm just focusing on the layout, um, but we're going to start getting into value control. So the reason I chose this toned paper um, is kind of twofold. One of it, one, one reason is it just gives me a challenge. It's something new to think about. Um, I am starting with something that is already gray rather than the white of the paper. So that means if I want to make anything lighter, I have to build up. Anything darker pushes down. So it starts to become more sculptural in that way. I'm kind of pushing and pulling the values rather than working with a white piece of paper where it's always additive. I'm always building charcoal on top of it, maybe erasing with my, my eraser here and kind of lifting off some of those values, but I can't go any whiter than the paper. Now in this case, because I have the white chalk, I can actually go lighter in value in an additive way. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to um, conceptualize the, the, the value structure here using this as a base. 
Uh, so as I come down here, I kind of chose this tone paper because it's fairly similar in value to this, this kind of gray surface that it's on. You can see that this gets a little bit lighter, but I feel like it's close enough. And if anything, this being a little bit darker um, allow, will allow the highlights to pop off a bit more. And so that's what I'm doing here. So if you're following along either with this or another object, kind of think about that as, as well. Um, and so again, it was kind of twofold. One of it is the challenge of working both additively and subtractively. And the other is that it's already close to the value in the, the, the photograph. Uh, if I bring that back down, what I also want to do is I want to start to think about where that value in the background or where the value of the paper could show through in the pipe. So in this area, for example, here, when in the drawing, I may not have to do much at all to actually indicate that value. That could end up being the white, of, or not the white, the, the tone of the paper here. Um, and as I come across here, I can look for some of those additional tones. So maybe this is a little bit darker. So maybe when I get to this part, I'll have to darken it a bit. So um, that's kind of my thinking about why I chose this. And I really encourage people to, to work on tone, tone paper, um, eventually maybe working on, on black paper um, and building purely using white uh, on top of uh, on top of that that black paper, um, so you're thinking additively, but in a in an inverse way than what we might be used to. All right, uh, so I've got that basic form structured, and uh, I'm going to grab my kind of soft vine charcoal, and I'm going to use this to block in the major values. And when I to get started, I'm going to look for that line of termination. So if anybody remembers, uh, I used that term in the last. Uh, in the last drawing as well. The line of termination is the point at which we transition from the object being in light to the object being in shadow. And often it feels a bit darker here right along that edge. And I want to try to visualize where that line is. And it's a very soft line as you can see in the photograph there. Um, you can see it, but it's a very fuzzy line. So um, I'm being fairly sensitive uh, with it right now. And I'm going to actually block this whole thing in as a value. If I squint my eyes, I can start to see overall value shapes. Um, now with the vine charcoal, it's fairly light, so I'm just going to not worry too much about the edges that I just established. Again, they're quite fuzzy. Thinking about the overall shadow shape here, see this cast shadow? Think about that as one unified shadow. And since I started these drawing uh, exercises live, I've played around with the surface a bit. Um, in the first one, I was drawing straight on this board, and there was some texture showing through that I didn't really quite respond to. Um, then I tried something else under the paper that was ultimately too textured, and I didn't like it. Um, what I have underneath here is just the cardboard from the back of the pad that the paper came from, and I find that it's working out really well. Um, I had a white board at, at one point as well that was pretty smooth, and I like that. Um, but I actually prefer to work on this tone. The white was kind of just too bright for me. Um, so uh, just being a little bit sensitive about it, but I felt like the, the white surface was too bright. Hello from Rhode Island, India, Hawaii. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well out there. I know it's another beautiful day here in Colorado. Um, I'm hoping to get outside a little bit later. We're allowed to go out and hit the trails. Um, and it's I find it very kind of essential to get out a little bit every day. Of course, got to keep our distances. So, um, so as you, you may have seen me in the, in the previous drawings, this vine charcoal um, is quite soft. I can knock that down, build up the values again. A lot of what I'm doing here is more about me thinking about the forms and working through the, the subtlety of the objects, getting more familiar with it, making adjustments. Uh, the, the more correct I have it in my mind, the better I understand the object in my mind, the, the, the better the drawing is going to turn out to be. So I need this initial time just to really kind of allow my mind to, to settle on these objects. So um, I'm not worried about the edges too much because again, I can come back in with my uh, kneaded eraser to clean it up. I ha you haven't seen me do that much yet. Um, now, one of the things that we're going to talk about throughout the drawing as well is, is anchoring this down. It's all very subtle, but you'll see a small, sh a really subtle shadow underneath the pipe, and that's essential in the drawing to anchor it to the page so it doesn't feel like it's pasted on there. So if we're going to go through all of this work to make this feel like a three-dimensional object, um, we want to 
make sure that it's anchored to the page in a way that reinforces that um, and not doesn't work against us. And a sharp edge with no kind of even subtle shadow on there um, it could really kind of flatten things out for us. And so I'm not worried about protecting this edge a little bit at all really. So let's just let that be a little fuzzy at this point. If anything, all that's starting to do is indicate the shadow. Okay. Um, although for Mexico, South Carolina, Montreal, any questions about this so far? Trying to keep these marks subtle. I, I won't really want to uh, avoid any kind of cross contour, some hatching marks that that work against the depth that I'm trying to create too. Um, you know, with the, the pipe having its own natural texture, I kind of want to use the tooth of the page to help reinforce that. All right, so let's see. Now this vine charcoal is, is very light. I know it's going to disappear again, so at this point still, I'm just thinking about the object. Starting to make adjustments. Um, maybe right in here. I'm not so worried about protecting this edge. I can let some kind of value kind of build up here. It's very subtle, but what's going to happen is when I put that, that highlight in there, it's going to kind of artificially enhance that just a little bit. Um, and if it's too heavy, I can always erase that down. Okay. So right, this is feeling pretty good here. I'm going to wipe that down a little bit. What do I need? What do I need now? Okay, so I think what I need to do is Kind of erase this form back out. Constantly evaluating. I, I cut that in too much right there. So what's nice about the vine charcoal is I can build that back up quite easily. And if anything, I want to be careful with that edge there. I don't want to overstate it because it's a rounded edge. What's that feel? I'm using the, the, I've got a screen right in front of me that helps me observe that form at a distance. If I were, uh, you know, working, if I wasn't on camera right now, I'd be stepping back frequently. Um, you know, so I, what I often like to do is look at it um, from as far away as possible. So as I build this up, I'll step away maybe six, eight feet, come back to it, work on it, step back six to eight feet. And as I start to build this, then I'll increase that distance. And sometimes, you know, if I'm in a big room, I can sometimes step back 20, 30 feet. And then as I, as I walk towards it, I go slowly, I'm evaluating the form and see how it changes over that distance. Um, and I want that object to hold at any distance. I want it to be readable at any distance. Um, you know, if, if there was a, an actual pipe in front of us, if we were 30 feet away from it, uh, we, we might be able to identify what that object is. We wouldn't really question it. Uh, at any of those distances. We want the drawing to do the same thing here. Um, now, I, because I'm kind of locked into my chair here, the screen in front of me helps provide that it takes this and it shrinks it down to a smaller scale. If you're working in a small space as well, um, one of the things you might try doing is uh, taking out a, a smartphone and um, photographing it and just seeing at a small scale is equivalent to stepping back at a distance. And so um, you want to change the context of your work and always be evaluating it. All right, I feel like that's, that's working a bit better. Um, I'm gonna, I think now switch to my charcoal. I'm gonna get rid of, get rid of my ebony pencil here. All right, um, I still see the subtle axis here and I want to make sure that's always in my mind here um, as I start to refine this edge. Um, holding the pencil towards the back, I've got this nice sharp point that I wanna save for some of the finer details towards the end. And so I want to make sure that I'm scraping along the edge and not, not really attacking that, um, that point of the pencil at this point. So just want to be careful not to grind this in because I'm going to lose that point. Um, and I find that it actually helps to create these curves to drag them more rather than draw them. So just kind of drag that edge taking it in bits and chunks. Um, I, now I've gone over this ellipse so many times, I'm feeling more confident that I understand what it's doing. Now this is all fairly dark, I can go dark. Start to refine this edge a bit. 
Um, now it gets a little bit lighter here. We've got this highlights. I'm just going to ignore that because I'm going to come back in later with the white chalk to establish that. And they want to round that out. I'm just keeping this really light, but I want to see if I can establish that edge just even just a little bit. I'm probably going to, what I'm going to do is actually erase that out because I don't want that to contaminate the white chalk as I, as I add that. But for now, I want to be able to visualize that edge. Visualize this edge as well. And if anything, I want to, as I'm, as I'm hatching this in, as I'm building up this value here, if anything, I want to go over the edge. You know, if I can go right up to the edge, that's great. Um, but I don't want to fall short when I'm shading this. I want to extend beyond it if possible, because what will end up happening is it'll create this odd halo. And I can always come back in and cut this out. Uh, start thinking about the shadow core here, which is going to be right in right inside here. Let this get a little bit lighter. It's all gonna, if you squint your eyes, it'll all read as one value. As you focus, as you focus your eyes, it will, um, you'll, you'll start to see some subtle variation. So I start to see kind of a shadow core here. There's a little bit of reflected light here. Um, along this edge, there's some bounce light under here. It gets a little bit darker along this edge and you can start to work in some of those, those values. So at this point, I'm just thinking about the uh, the overall value, starting to think about the subtlety there. Now before I erase out any highlight along here, I've got this now kind of a middle gray. I'm going to start to darken in the areas around it. Start to kind of add some of these chips in here along the edges. It creates this kind of dark edge. Let that be a little bit lighter. It's a little bit darker in here. Let that kind of fade off in here. So in here, it, it gets really tricky because there's a natural variation in color that, uh, of, the, of the object and in color and value. So it gets a little bit darker up near that top. You can see here it gets darker and it gets darker in here. And then you have the values. So you have um, the, the local color, the local value, which is the, the, the inherent value of the object as unaffected by light. Um, and then you have the kind of the optical value, um, which is what's happening when the light interacts with that object. And so here we have this value, it's a little bit lighter, but we still read it as, as really black. Um, and then it gets really dark in here, but even in here, it's, when, it, when this part of the, the pipe is in shadow, it still feels very, very dark. Um, and so you wanna be thinking about those two at the same time, the local value as well as the optical value. And, and go with that. So I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm being careful. I, I, my instinct right now is to pull out that shading stump and start to fill this in, but I actually wanna be careful with that right now because um, I, I like the texture of the paper. So if anything, I'm just gonna use my, my, the side of my pinky and soften that out a little bit. Um, and let the natural texture of the paper show through. I think that's gonna serve me uh, in the final drawing. All right, and now what I wanna do is I wanna start to look at the, the opening here, looking at some of the subtle variations. I'm gonna let this edge be a little soft to help to push that back, and if anything, um, sharpen the foreground edge, so I can do something like that and kind of just soften that edge. Now I want to establish this edge. I want to be careful not to overdraw that line. So I'm kind of doing some negative drawing here. So I'm just understanding where the path is along that, that inside opening. I build up some of the value here. I might have overstated that. There I can come in with my, my eraser if I need to. So here you can see, I, I talked about the halo earlier. So you can see what happened is that I was making these vertical marks 
shading this in, but I wasn't going right up to the edge that I wanted to, and it left this little halo. Um, that's something that I really pay a lot of attention to. Um, and I want to make sure that I avoid that halo as much as possible. So I know I need to go dark with this, and using the side of my charcoal, I'm preserving the point again, because I don't need a sharp edge, I don't need sharp detail at this, at this, uh, in this area here. And this is where I'm going to bring out my shading stump. This feels, this distance here feels too great, so I'm going to adjust this shape. Okay, so if I pull up my shading stump, there's a lot of charcoal on this. Make these vertical to help reinforce that vertical nature of the interior of the pipe. Um, and then across here, across the opening, let's see, it's dark. Not It's a little bit darker than what I currently have. But I want to start to think about that plane. So I'm going to use these marks here that run across the cross contour of that opening. And since this area is just pure, kind of pure black, I can let these marks run I'm right into that, that area. I don't have to worry about that edge too much. All right, now I'm feeling like this needs to be smoothed out. Let me see what's happening now. Now in this case, because I already have the form largely established, you know, I've kind of thought through all of this and I know where the form is gonna be, I am kind of working my way through um, kind of from start to finish here. I, I'm gonna leave kind of the final detail, so I'm just thinking about the darks at this point. All right, let's see how that, that feels there. All right, that's feeling pretty good. Um, I'm gonna come back in and sharpen that up a little bit later. <laughs> All right, on Procreate, huh? That's fascinating. So Oscar says he's trying this out on Procreate. I'm curious how that how that all works for you. So I wish we could share images on this. using these kind of circular marks to build up the values. Again, with anything, what this is doing is just keeping my pencil sharp. I wanna get this value correct, and then I'm, then I'm gonna go back in later and add all the little pits and scars that we're seeing in the pipe. All right, I'm gonna come back to this shadow here. And now I'm gonna come back into this area and start to define this. And you can see how this edge is really just staying kind of soft at this point. I can see my kind of guideline, but it's all very subtle. I build this up here, start to build up the value. Now I need to establish this edge. It's like a, anything I've kind of, there, I need to adjust that. Let's see, how's that look? Kind of adjust this again. Okay. I think about the base of the pipe. If I take a perpendicular line right down from the middle, that kind of puts it right in here. All right, and I want to make sure I have that transition into the stem of the pipe. 
um, and now I want to block in these values here. And so as I do that, this is, I know this is kind of a black handle, but I'm not going to make it, I kind of overcut that, there's a weird line here. I'm not going to make it pure black. So if we think of a value scale, uh, say 10 being black, zero being white, maybe I'll do this as a seven or an eight. And this part, you know, the handle is quite smooth, so I'm going to use my shading stump to really blend this in. Uh, start to build up the values here. Looking at the shapes that I'm seeing, observing the values. I'm going to keep going. I haven't got quite got to that seven yet. If this becomes my ten, right in this area here. Um, I'm, as I'm shading this, I'm putting my awareness on this value here. I'm still using my peripheral vision to observe that value. I'm going to build that up. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, really see if I can observe uh, the darkest part within this. And it, it's all very subtle and flat, but I do see some reflection in this part of the handle. Um, and so I want that to be this initial value that I'm establishing. And I'll come back in later and darken it even farther. So by kind of softening this and bringing some of these values down, what that's doing is it's actually starting to build that, that subtle shadow that's anchoring it to the ground a bit more. You know, of course, this isn't directly on the ground. It's actually lifted off because there's this kind of high point here and it's making contact here and here, um, but there's still a shadow underneath it that helps to anchor it to that, to the surface. All right, let me see what happens. I'm going to and use these circular marks to smooth this out. I want to build up these values here. And I'm going to build that up a little bit more later. Thinking about this value in here, starting to build out this form, kind of drawing with the shading stump. Uh, maybe reestablish this. Establish this edge here. And I like that value along there, and in the, as I move into this, the mouth uh, piece of this pipe, I can see like this kind of darker edge that starts in over here, um, but it kind of comes inward a little bit, leaving a bit of a lighter value right up to the edge. I'm going to carry it right over into that handle so I don't create that halo. All right, in here, it's a little bit darker. Now, what I'm really trying to do at this point now is just think of these as abstract shapes. I try not to identify um, the, the specific object here. I'm just trying to see this kind of subtle crescent form, this, this shape here, uh, this curve of this shadow here, uh, uh, and, and let those observations lead the drawing um, rather than you know, think, oh, this is a, the mouthpiece of a pipe. As I start to do that, I already have a kind of a preconceived notion about what that is and how it should look, and uh, I really want to rely on what, what is in front of me. All right, so that's, that's feeling quite dark in here. But before I lighten it up, I know that the, I haven't gone as dark as I can uh, in this part here, so I'm going to, I'm going to establish that. And if, that, if this part is still too... Uh, too dark, then I can always lighten it up. But let me see what happens here. Looking at that curve, letting it really wrap around there. Oh, from Chicago, Manchester, New Hampshire. Everybody doing okay? Everybody following along? Any questions? Comments, concerns. 
I'm gonna start to add in some of the details here in the pipe. Now right in here, I'm gonna really be careful with this curve. I'm gonna try to wrap that around. There's that sharp edge with that, that thin middle metal band. You can kind of do some neg negative drawing here. I'm gonna draw that black part of the handle up to it um, to create that edge. That, that metal band is just a little bit lighter. And that's gonna be a lot of fun when I start to add the details. I'm gonna come back to those details in a little bit. I'm just laying down the charcoal here. I want this dark. But I'm not going right up the edge. I'm gonna leave this as that kind of a value eight or nine maybe is what it is now. Uh, one of the things I mentioned in the last one is that we're, we're really sensitive to seeing subtle shifts in value. Uh, and I found that we're actually more sensitive um, in, our, in our kind of slight peripheral vision. Uh, we're more sensitive to value and color when, when not looking at an object directly, but just looking at it a little off center. Uh, so that means, you know, if I'm, if I'm studying this value here, what I might do is actually put my focus on this area, but my attention on this. And I, and I find that I'm more sensitive to those value relationships by being just a little off, um, off from center. Let me see. I'm gonna establish this edge a little bit sharper. I'm gonna to have to use my rubber eraser to clean that back up. All right, I'm gonna be careful about how this is anchoring to the paper, let's see. Now, now I can go back and look at this. Like I said, I didn't want to lighten that up until I had um, established that, that really dark value in here. And how's that feeling? That's feeling actually pretty good. I want to leave it there. I'm not, I'm not ready to lighten that. It still feels, I guess, a little bit too dark for, for it right now. But um, because I'm not confident in it, I am going to let it sit for now. Uh, maybe just refine that form. See, darken that. All right, so I've kind of built everything up. The next pass at value, as I squint, still feel like this needs to come down. This needs to get darker. Um, and as I'm making these hatch marks, I'm really trying to be careful about the touch of the pencil um, at, towards the end of each mark. So I'm almost kind of scooping it. This is an exaggerated motion, but you can see I'm kind of lifting it off the page at each end. And so I want the kind of the heavier pressure to hit kind of in the middle, not at the end where we tend to kind of lean into it. And that creates these, these kind of hard edges as we block in values. Um, and so building up pressure control is really helpful um, when, you're, when you're trying to improve your drawing is in very subtle ways identify where are you kind of leaning into it a bit more. All right, I'm feeling better about this. I think I will smooth this out. I feel like that, that is a little, it's a little bit too rough of a texture. Now starting to look at some of the subtlety, the subtle forms. There's some you know, variations in color and tone here that I'm gonna to start to indicate just using the charcoal that's been transferred to the, uh, the, the shading stump here. Yeah, so I like that texture to begin with, but I'm feeling like it's a bit too much. So I'm being very light with this, trying to smooth it out some, um, but try to find that balance where the, the tooth of the paper is helping me versus when it's kind of working against me. I'm working up to that edge. All 
Um, I am going to now cut this out using my rubber eraser. Sharpen this edge just a bit. See how that feels. Still feels a little, little fuzzy for me. As I come down this edge, I want to be very careful not to make one solid hard mark all the way through. Um, I want to feel my way down it to see, in using the reference image, where does it feel like it's a, kind of a sharper edge and where does it feel softer. To me, it feels a little bit softer right in this area, so I'm going to let that be sharpen that edge a little bit. And then it starts to sharpen up again under here as we get to that, that cast shadow here. Right under here, it gets dark. All right, we got a lost and found edge along here where it almost disappears, it's very subtle. I'm gonna establish this shadow, this cast shadow on the ground plane. Some negative drawing there, so now the pipe comes light against that dark cast shadow. This feels like it gets a little bit lighter right in here, so I can redefine that edge using some of that negative drawing in there. But I want to be careful with that. Don't want to overstate it. Build up some of these values here in that cast shadow. So looking on the screen here, I feel like this could go darker. Let's go darker in here. Maybe make some contrast, smoothing this out a little bit more. Using the shading stuff, I'm really kind of grinding this charcoal in. It's not going to erase very well from this point on. So I just want to be careful. I've got this edge here. One of the things I'm thinking about too is I'm this shading stump is picking up charcoal and it's laying it down. So as I'm establishing the values, it's kind of it's also making these marks and making these kind of um, it's kind of messy marks along here, but I guess that's all right. I'm not going to worry about it too much. If I, uh, if I do want to smooth it out, then I have to start to be really sensitive using my kneaded eraser to pull out some of these darker spots, smooth it out. Be using the tips of my fingers like that, but that's all right. All right, that's pretty subtle, but I feel like that's working for me right now. I think I want to get back into the pipe. So let's see here. I think I want to, I'm wait, saving those highlights for the end. So now what I want to do is I want to start to add some of these details right in here. I want to refine this shadow. I'm going to leave this edge a little bit lighter. There are just some natural color variations that I can start to indicate with my um, my pencil here, I, I'm trying not. I'm trying to avoid any hard lines in this area. It'll feel kind of unnatural. There is this thin shadow that I can indicate a bit, perhaps a bit more clearly. I don't like how bumpy that is. Let's see. I need to erase this out a little bit. And use my shading stump in this area here. So now I'm trying to simulate the uh, the value of that that metal, and it's slightly uh, more reflective than some of the other areas. It was a little bit lighter in here. When things are reflective, the 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 shadow and the highlight lines just become sharper and crisper. Um, now in this case, it's not highly reflective, so they are, it's all very soft but perhaps the shape of the shadow and the shape of the highlights are a bit clearer. And now, like right along in this band, as I look really closely, um, there's there these tiny little bumps um, that I can suggest along here. It's just a thin line right inset from the outer edge. 
I'm going to use a highlight to establish those, those bumps a little bit later. Smooth this out a little bit. That's feeling better. A little bit lighter up towards the edges with a sharp edge, a little bit darker here as a shadow core. All right. And I think I want to kind of clarify this edge. So I, want to, I really want to be careful about this being a hard, consistent edge. Just sharpen it in a few areas, especially right here on the inside, that'll help to create that three-dimensional form. Um, if this is feeling too subtle, too soft, I want to erase this back out to sharpen that edge rather than darken it with a line. Um, hmm. All right, I wanna see how that form is feeling. You can see along here, it's highly reflective. You get a really distinct shadow, I mean, a really highlight. You got a value in here that's close to the tone of the paper, maybe a little bit darker. All right, that's feeling pretty good. I want to think about this form in here. Maybe sharpen that up. And then right in here, I think that's perhaps a little bit too dark. Now I'm going to define that edge by the shadow, the cast shadow here, just underneath the mouthpiece, that's slightly darker than the, uh, than the mouthpiece. So the shadow is a little bit darker. And that'll help to pop that forward. Carry that under, see how that feels. So I feel, yeah, that anchors that down pretty well. All right. And there's some subtle values, some subtle shadow here. that. Let's see. I want to be careful not to overstate it. All right. How's everybody doing? All right. That scoop gesture is working for you, huh? Something new? You know, pressure really is, it has so much to do with drawing. Um, and so whatever you can do to help you gain pressure control, and that's why a tripod grip like this, the one that we use for writing, is challenging. I mean, you can kind of lean up and, and off of the pencil a little bit to lighten up the pressure, but that's really not designed for pressure control. That's designed for something that's really consistent and even, like when we're, when we're writing. When you're drawing, I found that allowing the paper to rest on its side, either in like an overhand grip like this, or this kind of underhand, I like the underhand, and just letting the weight of the pencil do the work. And if I need to add a, apply a little bit more pressure, it's just a subtle turning of the hand into the paper. And so that, that to me gives me a little bit more pressure control. I can kind of use the rocking of my hand to create that. Um, and you just get, you get comfortable using the weight of the pencil to create the marks. Um, and it also, it, it kind of interacts with the paper in an interesting way. It allows the paper to, to play a role in the drawing. And it's a, such a huge thing. You know, the, the paper, you know, is 50% of the drawing. It's not just the marks we're making on it. It's what we are drawing on that is also a key player. All right. One of the things I love about the kneaded eraser is that, you know, this area here is, is fairly modeled. It's not, um, not all that even. So I can make this kind of kneaded eraser kind of lumpy and simulate texture that way. Simulate some atmosphere. Reestablish this edge if I need to. All right, how's that feeling? So if I felt like I'm glaring at you right now, I'm just trying to, to squint my eyes at the screen to see how the the, uh, the how it's all holding up. And it feels like it's too much. Right in there. Let me lighten that up. And then, let's see. Kind of feel like this needs to come a little bit darker, if I can make it any darker. Or maybe, out of luck, let's see. Looking at the point, my charcoal, I want to make sure I save that. 
because I want to get all these little cracks in here. Really building up these values. Not going right up to the edge. Uh, that helps to keep that rounded quality there. All right, where are we at right now? Hello, hello. Everybody, uh, everybody doing well? Following along? Let's see, right in here. I think I need to go even darker. Hello from Australia and Pennsylvania. Hello, hello. I think it's, it's pretty, pretty wild that we're from able to join in from such great distances. And I have a feeling we all have some sense about what we're each going through, kind of know what we're all feeling to some degree. All right. Darken that. How I want to look at that edge. Before I lighten this up, I want to darken in the areas around it. I think some of that detail right in there. Uh, let's see. Now with this area, I've got this kind of dark band. Rather than draw it too heavily as a line this way, I want to try to break that up by running marks that are a bit more vertical that follow along the contour of the, that surface. And that's what's going to help make it feel like it's a, it's a darker part of that form. If I drew a heavy line this way across it, it might pop that off. It may not quite feel like it's anchored to the form. So I want to pay attention to the direction of the marks. All right. Right in here, it gets a little bit darker. So I'm thinking about this path, but moving my, my pencil in a line that's kind of contrary to that, that helps to anchor it on the surface. This is all very subtle in here. All right, now let's see what happens if I erase out this. So what I'm what I'm doing here with my kneaded eraser is I'm kind of sharpening it to a point, molding it to a point, and trying to erase out that form. Kind of lost that that sharp point. If I, let's see, if I reach down, I actually have some, some sandpaper here. I can get me my, that sharp point back now. And I want to really kind of make sure that I'm, I'm anchoring this, this line properly. Getting some of that detail in there, because that, I can't quite get all that sharp with my kneaded eraser. So if I make a line that's less refined, I can cut back into it with the, uh, with the uh, charcoal. Bring that down like that. And darken some of these points in along here. Looking at some of that variation, thinking about that plane across the, the opening of the pipe. Maybe lifting off some of that value, just kind of tapping it. Let's see here. Add that little pit right in there. I'm feeling pretty good about that right now. All right, and I want to add some of that detail right in there. Maybe lighten this up just a touch along that lip. Something like that. How's that feeling? Is that looking good? All right. So now what I'm doing is I've, I've, I'm feeling confident about the shadow shapes here. Um, I want to go in and start to add some of these details here, some of these pits and cracks. Now, I'm not sure if I need to have them be super precise at this point, but I mean, this is what gives this, this pipe kind of character and age. I don't, 
you know, I've had this thing for quite a while. And it's my grandfather's. It came down from him. Never saw it used or anything like that. Um, it was used at some point, but um, I think the thing that it really fascinates me is just the, the character of that texture. So I want to be able to indicate that. And I think the, uh, you know, rather than get the, the specific marks exactly, I mean, I could really spend my time placing each crack exactly where it needs to go. But it's really, for me, more about the overall feeling and character that I want to capture first. And if I look at the drawing and say, no, this just doesn't work, maybe it needs to be more specific, then um, I, can, I can adjust it later. But I'm just kind of like tapping along. And as I'm doing that, I'm still thinking about the form of the pipe. This makes this, it's not perfectly cylindrical. It's kind of a cylinder that's been squished. And so as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about what that form is. And I want these marks to be on that surface. So here's this dark mark, for example. It follows this path, but I'm running these marks vertically. That helps to anchor it onto that surface. Um, rolling the pencil, you may have seen me do that as well, is with, the, with the, the shading stump, is constantly twisting it to find the edge um, and, and make something that feels more kind of naturalistic. Okay. How are we feeling about that? All right. All right, now I think I'm getting to the point where I can start to add the lights. Be sharpening up this edge just a little bit. I want to be careful not to overstate that. Now I've got some value associated with this. I want to clear off all of the charcoal in the area where I'm going to be adding that light. Um, this white chalk is kind of cool in nature um, and it tints quite easily. Um, so any charcoal that's on the page is going to get picked up by that white and it's going to be mixed in and it makes it very difficult to work with later. Now this edge is fairly subtle um, as it wraps around that this light here. Um, we start to lose that edge and so I can let my drawing reflect that as well. So I'm using some negative drawing here to visualize where that highlight's gonna go. And if anything, maybe I need to darken this up a little bit more in here. Erase out that highlight. Kind of just picking up the charcoal here to add, kind of reinforce some of that texture. It's not super smooth. There's some kind of variations there that I can use to my advantage here. So I'm feeling good that that's taken out. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I figure out where that highlight is. Erase that back out. All right. Here we come to, this is the fun part. All right, so I want to think about where those sharp points are gonna be. Cause I, I've got my, my white chalk pencil here that has been fine, refined down to a sharp point. And as I start to build up values, this is a big area here, I may lose that point. So what I might do is save that part to a little bit later, use the points that I need the, the finest detail, do those first while I have this nice point here and then fill this in where it becomes a little less critical. I don't need that high, that, that highly sharpened point there. So I am going to actually drop in the highlight here. Um, and it feels good, right? So let's see, it's actually just below that kind of dark point here. Let's see if I can race that out a little bit more. Thinking about this more like a constellation than anything, just these pieces of line that accumulate together to create that highlight and then create that, uh, that texture there. Maybe state that a little bit more. Um, I want to define this edge just a little bit more as well. So let me kind of bring in, there's some light catching this inside uh, edge here. I'm rolling my pencil as I go along, so it's finding fresh pastel as I go. 
And I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna grab my uh, sandpaper again, just kind of clean that off, clean that off a little bit. Get that char that chalk off of there, charcoal off of there. Now I'm gonna come back in here, and then there's these little dots that create this really cool band around the metal. So it's a little bit brighter here at this point, and and then it kind of trails off. So I want my drawing to do reflect that as well. Um, and then there's a little dip in here that I can start to create. There's a little bit of contrast here that I could state a bit. Create some dimensionality in that band. And now I want to come over here to add the highlight right in here. Thinking about the structure of this, so running across the con cross contour. And so now I've got the highlight established in the white, I've got the shadow with the charcoal, um, and there's the space in between that I'm allowing the paper to fill in that gap there. That's what I really like about working with toned paper here. All right, how am I feeling about this? Let's see. I think I'm ready for this portion of the drawing. So I want to establish this edge. Keeping that, light, that line kind of thin at this point. It's really kind of brightest down in here where it's catching the light more. So now I'm going to use the side of my uh, chalk. So if anything, what's happening now is it's, it's refining the point. Here we go. Kind of providing that transition. Again, letting the paper um, serve as that middle gray. Now, let's see, I've got the paper kind of taped down here. So normally I think what I would do is actually turn this. Let me just see what I can do. Kind of feathering it out to create that transition. So this is, you know, as I was talking earlier, the, the advantage or the challenge working with the toned paper is that I have to think both additively and subtractively throughout the process. So this is the additive part where I'm building those lights again. If this was white paper, I would need to be preserving this or erasing back down to the white in order to get this value. That would be subtractive. Um, and so the, uh, it's a, an interesting challenge that gets me to think about the form of the pipe in interesting ways. So now what I'm starting to do is thinking about the, the structure of the pipe, maybe blending a little bit with this to bridge the, the two materials together here. So we've got the highlights. I got this really kind of dirty at this point. I'm going to wipe it off my pants. It'll come out. Really kind of dark, lighten this up, getting the values here. All right, how are we feeling about that? Vicki, you're welcome. Thank you for watching. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I don't know, what do y'all think? Feeling like it works. You know, not quite 100% there, but I'm, I'm feeling like it captures the spirit of this. Right now I'm just kind of softening this. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit more time uh, to kind of refine this a little bit more. Again, uh, feel free to read through the description. You're gonna find this reference photo if you wanna create your own drawing. Um, uh, the next one that's coming up is uh, Life Gave Us Lemons. That's the title of the next one. Um, so I bet you can guess what that subject is going to be. Um, you know, check out other things at Artist Network. I know we've got a deal going on um, with Artist Network TV. So hundreds of videos uh, that you can uh, you watch to, to build your skills, be inspired. Um, there's a special deal right now going on uh, because this, um, this is a time when um, we could all use 
you know, some you know, distraction from the real world, build our skills, and, and such. So um, if you need to cut out, like I said, I'm gonna, gonna keep working on this just for a little bit, continue to refine, but I really appreciate, take, appreciate you taking the time to join me here. Share it with your friends. I'd love to have more people on here. The bigger the group, the better. Um, get some ideas being shared. Um, you know, as you're trying out these techniques, think about what questions you might have. Um, and, and you can always ask me about them. So if you watched, say if you're watching this and you're trying this out on your own and you want to come back on, uh, on Wednesday at, at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, if you want to come back then when we're working on the lemon drawing, but you have questions about this, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do the, the, the Life Gave Us Lemons, whether that's going to be another toned paper drawing um, or whether that's going to be uh, charcoal on paper, graphite, etc. But I want to have some fun. This has been really helpful for me. Again, one of the things that I've mentioned before is that um, I often neglect drawing. And it's such a big thing, uh, especially um, if you're a painter. I, you know, I, I typically you know, spend my free time painting. Um, but drawing is an essential part of that. It's about um, helping you to develop the skills of um, controlling proportions, perspective, um, really understanding the subject, you know, getting rid of color um, it allows you just to really focus on some of the other elements. And I, I, I spend so much time when I'm painting really focusing on a color that um, I find it really helpful to kind of step away from that and start to sharpen some of my other uh, skills. So I'm going to try to maybe add some of that texture right in there. All right. Thank you, Kathleen. You're welcome, Charles. Thank you. All right. I feel, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Thank you again. I will see you all Wednesday at the same time, so 3 p.m. Eastern on Mountain Time. So it was 1 p.m. my time. Um, so look forward to it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on Wednesday.